I joined EJN for Families about a year ago during COVID when all these issues started to arise and I think I, along with a lot of other people, started to feel a little disconnected from my community. So I joined in hopes of kind of using the voice that I was given. And this has been one of the most rewarding experiences I never really expected. I have really eye-opening conversations, and I think specifically when we work for families, it makes me feel like I'm really making a change because we're teaching children that they shouldn't be afraid to use their voice to talk about harder things, and that's going to create a better future for us where people are able to use their voices and really advocate for equity. Welcome to Moving Forward Together with Equal Justice in Needham. I am the show host, Gretchen Cook Anderson. Today we'll learn about one of EJN's working groups, EJN Families. This group came together in order to support the Needham students who were speaking out against racism following the George Floyd murder. Their goal is to address racism by helping parents and caregivers teach and model empathy towards those who are different from themselves. Our panel are Needham parents and educators who are committed to this important work. They are Rebecca Young, a social worker at Newton North High School, and who happens to be a close friend of mine, thank you very much, uh, Maciel Gallardo, a parent, and Jill Olive, wonderful Jill Olive, an early childhood educator. Jill, let's start with you. How did you all come together and you know, what did you hope to achieve with this particular working group? Well, I'm really excited to share about EJN for families, Equal Justice Needham for Families. And it all began with during the summer of 2020, national protests against racial injustice were amplified and Needham High School students were speaking out about feeling unwelcomed in Needham and being discriminated against in local shops. As Equal Justice in Needham was starting, Emily Touche, the leader who got this going, suggested forming a subgroup to support parents and caregivers in having open discussions with their children about diversity inclusivity and fairness. Emily reached out to parents, teachers and researchers and families in town and equal justice Needham for families began to build momentum. We are currently six members, six women. We meet every other week to talk and brainstorm about the directions of EJNF and the programs we can offer families. We are a motivated group seeking change in our community so that everyone is treated fairly and with respect. I personally have to say um, how much I have grown from this experience. I have met some really um, incredible people and I'm learning a tremendous amount about anti-bias education, identifying my own biases, and I'm invested in creating a better world. It's been wonderful. And maybe there are some folks out there who might like to join us. So thank you very much for asking that question, Gretchen. Thank you, Jill. And I, you know, I really respect the work that you all are doing in the community. And I know, Jill, you've been active for quite some time. So, um, you know, this is this is not your first rodeo, as they say. I know that you you and your husband have been quite active. Uh, so another um, uh, offshoot of that question for you, if you don't mind. Um, why should parents have conversations with their young children about diversity and equity? You know what? Let's get to the why. Why is that important? It's a great question. And um, I'd like to start with that it's never 
too early to begin the conversation at home about race, diversity, and inclusivity. Um, studies have shown that infants begin to see differences at you know, age three months. They might look longer at someone who matches their own skin color. And by three years, three years old, they are already exhibiting a preference for same race friends. Um, and parents should be the first to share with their children about race and inequity. And don't wait for your children to bring it up. As children grow up, and if you haven't talked about why people have different skin color, why does a family have two moms, or why someone wears a head covering, they will begin to develop their own narratives or biases from the media, friends, and the world at large. It may be an uncomfortable topic, but like anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. And most importantly, your child will know you are open to talking and answering their questions. Another important point is, you know, you may not know all the answers or you may make a mistake, but that's okay. We all do. <laughs> You and your child can look for the answers together. This is a journey and a time of learning for all of us. And please um, make sure early on your family library represents all cultures and people of different skin color, disabilities, same sex parents, gender differences, etc. And select programs, toys, artwork that are diverse in nature and go on outings outside of your neighborhood. Lastly, these conversations are so important in order for children to grow up being inclusive, fair, and kind. Thank you so much, Jill. You really Welcome. underscore you know, the important role that parents can play. And so I want to turn uh, over to Maciel uh, with that gorgeous, gorgeous name. Uh, Maciel, please tell us about the programming that EJN Families has been doing and uh, what effect do you think it's having in the community and on the children? Thank you, Gretchen, and thank you for having us here, for giving us this platform to talk about the work that Equal Justice and Eden for Families is doing. I've had the... Uh, the privilege and uh, the honor of, of meeting this great group of women. For me, it was a personal journey um, to embark into um, the work of social justice um, at home. And uh, that was one of the core focuses of the group when we came together, that these conversations, that the work has to start at home. And hence, we, we venture off with Equal Justice and Even for Families. Um, we believe that it's important for these difficult but necessary conversations to begin, like Jill mentioned, as early as possible at home so that parents have that ability or that initiative to um, start or spark those conversations and that interest in, in their families and their children. However, like myself, a parent, oftentimes we want to have those conversations but we don't necessarily know how. Um, I found myself before joining Equal Justice and Human for Families reading about social justice, reading about anti-racism, um, joining webinars. And I realized that while I was reading about it and listening into these conversations, I was not bringing those conversations home because I didn't know how to. And so we started the focus on two types of programming for adults, for parents, caregivers, and as well as for children. So we have Needham Speaks, which is a workshop to have community conversations about the difficult but necessary topics uh, to dive into deeper conversation about the tools that we need to acquire as parents, as adults, as caregivers, to really embark into that personal journey or family journey of 
tackling and discussing the issues at hand that impact communities at large, you know, whether it is discrimination, um, violence, uh, racial violence against minorities, whether it is uh, food insecurity, which is something that, you know, is so relevant, especially today. We're all learning. Um, and, and that's what I love about uh, Needham Speaks for adults. But true to my heart is uh, family story time. Family story time has offered that space to engage my children in conversations about the things, the, the topics of social justice that are important, but at their level. And so it creates uh, a space for guest authors, as well as guest readers to engage the young audience after reading with them um, an interactive Q&A session where you get to watch these little individuals um, digest and interpret what was presented to them. For my family, what has been really meaningful about story time is um, that it gives us an opportunity to connect about issues of equity in a way that feels both playful and also meaningful. So it sparks conversation for us and um, it's also light and age appropriate so that it doesn't feel scary and it makes those conversations really enjoyable. Um, and my son loves it. I mean, he really had fun at story time. And this summer when we didn't have story times, he asked me, you know, when is that going to start up again? What I like about this story time, I like the stories. You liked Maddie's fridge. I liked Maddie's fridge. The, at the end of that story time, there was an announcement that to help people in our own community with food insecurity, that we could contribute to the Lunch Equity Project. So Gabrielle heard them and make that announcement and then after story time he asked me about that so we were able to continue the conversation and talk about food insecurity in Massachusetts and here in Needham and that you know there's food insecurity everywhere and so he had um, uh, do you want to say what you did and I and I and I donated money to the lunch equity project yes yeah so that was really an awesome action that he was able to take as a result of participating in story time. We liked Maddie's fridge because it showed that some people don't have the money to buy food that they need. So we, we can donate things to try and help them. So the, the story times uh, through Equal Justice and Needham have been really meaningful to our family because um, they provided some great content, great stories um, for the kids to hear about various topics related to diversity. Um, and it's helped us have some conversations with the kids after the story time as well, which has been really wonderful for us. Yeah, it, it's led to conversations that I wouldn't have known how to bring up and um, how to talk about those things in a, in a way that kind of pushes things a little bit, but um, that they can follow. It's also um, been very child friendly. So it's, you know, they've created such a warm and welcome environment for kids to be able to speak up during the story times. And so they have felt comfortable to make comments, ask questions, say how they felt about the stories, which has been really nice for them. It's so important for us as a family to have these discussions privately. And it's also something that's really valued by other adults in the community to have these discussions and to prioritize them and to make this a commitment and, and um, to be a consistent place to do that. Family story time is uh, uh, hosted online, virtually on Zoom, the second Sunday of every month. And we have a different guest author or different guest reader. And uh, we uh, aim at covering and bringing into the conversation different communities and different uh, um, topics within the, the um, diversity, inclusion, uh, and equity spectrum. You know, when, when my children were small and we, and we uh, you know, we tried to find tools to begin conversations with them or to address issues that they brought home from school, 
or something that a friend might have said. And we found a great tool was the, it was an ABC TV show called What Would You Do with John Quinones um, as the host. And you can find all of the, the segments on YouTube, they're, they're there. Um, but they address all kinds of really interesting, um, you know, current societal topics around diversity, equity, racism. I mean, they really cut ability and disability, uh, LGBTQ matters. I mean, they really, that, that show really dived in deep um, and presented different scenarios um, and for, so for families who sit together and watch a show like that, it really allows the children to watch the segment, the family to watch it together, and then for them to have some really fruitful, really beautiful, rich conversations um, afterwards. And so we found that to be an amazing tool to use among others. So I just wanted to mention that. Rebecca! Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's Hi, Gretchen. fun to actually be interviewing my, my dear friend. Uh, so you, I know that you work with high school students, um, which is a very different group than the younger children, of course. Um, do you have any tips for parents of high school students about how to engage them on issues around racism in particular? I do have a few tips. I always, I do wanna start with just saying that being involved with, with Equal Justice Needham for Families has provided me an important space um, to build relationships with people committed to a more equitable Needham. And that has been extremely powerful and important for me um, as I have grown in my own um, kind of racial identity and awareness. Um, and I hope that I will continue to over the course of my hopefully very long life um, in doing race and equity work. Um, it's been a commitment that's been invaluable um, as I look to be a co-conspirator in um, doing anti-racism work and as an educator and a Needham community member. Um, so I would love to talk to you about teenagers. Um, I do work in Newton. I actually work at both Newton North and Newton South um, and have an opportunity to meet some really amazing high schoolers um, and have a high schooler of my own. So when I think about um, how we have conversations with teens, um, you know, I think there's nothing better than really talking about current events. There's so many things that um, are important jumping off points, um, thinking about how we understand, um, you know, what's happening in the world around us, whether it's in government, whether, um, you know, we see it in politics, whether we're talking about the Black Lives Matters movement, whether we're talking about um, important historical events, um, you know, really thinking about um, the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and thinking about uh, Islamophobia, um, which certainly 20 years ago, that was not um, what the kind of general population was thinking about. Um, we were in a very different kind of political um, perspective. And, you know, I think today um, there's so many things and so many tools um, that we can draw from um, just in what's happening in the world around us. Um, you know, we have anniversaries of marriage equality. Um, I love to imagine that people might watch the news um, or a 60 minute segment on Sunday nights. Um, those are great um, kind of entry points to some complex discussions, asking your teens what they think about um, the, the things that are happening in the world around us. Um, kids and uh, teens have a lot of really valuable um, perspectives and opinions. And I think the more you engage with them and ask them what they think, um, you really can, um, you know, really learn a lot about their values, who they are. And sometimes if we're not asking, we don't know what's going on um, with their thoughts and to be able to share ours. Um, the other thing I, I'm also mindful of is I think it's helpful when parents talk about their own childhood and their own experiences um, as it pertains to, you know, um, racial awareness, um, diversity and equity in um, the spaces that we grew up. Um, you know, whether you were, you know, a young person, you know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, um, you know, thinking about how our own experiences change over time. I think that can be really powerful. Um, I think sometimes um, people, you know, kids just assume that your childhood was just like theirs. Um, so I think it is valuable to talk about kind of what you um, as a parent have kind of seen and experienced and noticed over time. I think sometimes teens aren't tuned into that um, or asking questions. So take, 
a moment to share. Um, the other thing I think can be valuable is thinking about what our teenagers um, and middle schoolers and, and elementary students are learning from the um, novels that they're reading and the books that they're reading. Ask them about um, the, the things that they're reading in their English class, in their history classes. Ask about the characters in the books. Who do they relate to? Are they similar or different from themselves? Are they, do they have classmates that resonate um, with those with those characters thinking about, you know, there's some really powerful things that you can um, think about in terms of mirrors and windows in our, mm -hmm. in our reading. Um, are, our, are our students here in Needham having opportunities for both? Seeing themselves in, the, in their materials and their work in their history books, or are they um, only seeing people different from themselves? And, and that may vary depending on your background. Um, I also think that social media is a great entry point in thinking about talking with teens. Um, you know, have you ever spent some time with your your teenager looking at their Instagram account or Snapchat? Find out who they're or following. TikTok. Or TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is one I haven't dive. I haven't. I haven't myself kind of gotten into. Um, but I think that it's important. Ask your kid. You know, what do they think is funny? What don't they like? Are they people that they follow that have, um, you know, perspectives different than themselves? Are, are they finding um, that they're drawn to, uh, you know, kind of humor or are they looking at news outlets? You know, I think it's great um, kind of entry point to be asking about, um, you know, what your kids are thinking about. And social media is one of the ways that they actually get a lot of information. And, you know, I want to stop, you know, kind of my last thought is, you know, remembering that we as adults um, and as parents of teens, that we also are still learning and that the road to change is actually right within us. And so um, we as parents don't always have the answer um, for our teens about what's happening in the world, how we are learning as we go to understand um, kind of new perspectives on, you know, events and history um, and how we understand um, kind of what and where our country has been. Um, I think it's important to be open that um, we haven't necessarily had the broadest education here in the US and it hasn't been broad enough um, and that we're seeing important changes happening. Um, so I think that when we, we talk with our children, it's important for us to be human, um, that this is a lifelong process of kind of racial identity development um, individually, but also that we are, that we are learning that systemic racism and oppression uh, for many people are new topics, but they have always been here. Mm -hmm. And how do we, um, you know, create space to help adults with this process um, as they are having young people who are growing up in a time where there's much more conversation and awareness. Um, it's important that we um, think about the past and make connections to what is happening now. Um, and so what better way to do that than with your own life experience um, and help your kids learn, um, you know, right there from, you know, how you've developed over time and how you've learned and changed and grown. So those are a bunch of ideas and probably like, like everyone, I am very passionate about. Oh, yes about this. And so there's a lot of things that we can and should uh, kind of step into um, those discussions. So thank, thank you for that. that. I was going to say amen to that. Thank you for, to all of that. Thank you all for all three ladies. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and it's interesting. One of the, the things that you mentioned, Rebecca, when I, I sometimes uh, when you were talking about all of us as adults that we are have the capacity to be lifelong learners and to challenge ourselves, no matter what age we are. You know, I've often heard people say, well, you know, the work of social justice is for young people. It's for young people to do. It's for young people, not for the, you know, it's, it's for that next generation. We're passing, passing the baton. And my thing is, no, 
we we have to still be part of change ourselves. Uh, and I, you know, I hope I live to 99 and until the age of 99, I want to still be involved um, just as much as I've had an opportunity to be um, in, the, in the past and, and currently. So um, I, I love the, the point that you made there about us as adults, that we have the ability to continue to learn, to continue to grow, and then to influence and inspire those uh, who are coming up behind us. So I appreciate that point very much. Thank you. Um, and so that brings me, uh, does EJN uh, families collaborate with other Needham groups around equity, Rebecca? You know, they, we do. Um, we have had collaboration uh, with the Needham Public Library. Um, we have worked with the Chinese Friends of Needham with the CARES grant with the library. And we will be working with the Needham Diversity Initiative Summit that will be coming up in um, November, which is wonderful. And we will be having our um, our, our adult conversations um, in October, we're gonna be working in conjunction um, and collaboration with uh, Temple Aaliyah and the Needham Youth and Family Services, really thinking about teens um, and thinking about um, mental health. So those are things that we're looking forward to. So we've done some collaboration and we will continue to collaborate with a variety of town um, organizations and groups. So thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so inspired. Oh. And I hope <laughs> others are too. I'm sure others are too. Uh, so Jill, Maciel, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us, for giving thank us you. your time. Thank we you. know that, you know, for parents, grandparents, busy people, very busy people. So we appreciate the time that you're giving, um, not only for this, uh, you know, for this episode, um, but also in the community. So thank you all for all the work that you're doing. Uh, we have lots to think about as we consider where we are and where we want to go in terms of raising anti-racist children in Needham. Please take a moment to go to the EGN website to fill out a short survey so we can learn uh, your opinions on this particular topic. You can also email us uh, at the address on your screen, all right, uh, with any ideas or feedback you may have for our show. So. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time on Equal Justice with Needham and moving forward together. So thank you very much. Signing off.